Welcome to segment two of Citizens Forum, being filmed on Wednesday, July 24th in the beautiful Memorial Arena in Victoria. I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff who make it all happen. Our guest in this segment is Louis Guilbeau. I've known Louis for many years. And uh, the main issue he's always been working on, or you've always been working on, Louis, I know has been rail, commuter rail, um, light rail, trams, all of, all of this very, very important stuff because our transportation system is so very important. Um, have you been successful? <laughs> Not particularly, no. No, actually, we, uh, we did have one great success in, in when Sandwich Council said they didn't want bus rapid transit, they wanted rail. That was a real, a, a real turning point, I think, that, uh, and, and now BC Transit is actually looking at LRT and, and not bus rapid transit, which has been a total flop in Ottawa. So Okay, so... So that, that is one success. Okay. Now, y you put down a few things you'd like to talk about, and the first one kind of included talking about the Blue Bridge. Right. So what, what I'd like to do with the Blue Bridge question is this. Um, Victoria City Council has now demolished the Blue Rail Bridge. Right. That bridge was the link along the E&N rail line, which goes all the way from Langford into downtown Victoria, and I think is the number one potential solution for a lot of our transportation problems in town, mm -hmm. is to be running commuter rail, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 trains a day back and forth yeah. between Langford and downtown Victoria. The rail bridge is gone, so at the moment that's not possible. How viable is that kind of an idea if the rail bridge was still there? Uh, I think the idea is still viable. It, it took a huge hit when, when, when they lost the rail bridge, though. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge, uh, it's, a, it's a real shame that we lost such, a, such an asset, you know. That, and it's a real shame that the province seems oblivious, you know. They don't seem to care. I mean, the, the, the I wouldn't say they're oblivious. I would say all of our provincial governments over the last 20 years, the NDP for 10 years and now the yeah, Liberals yeah. for 12, they, they, they weren't, are they weren't absolutely any. opposed to rail. They are being told, I guess, spend all the money on roads and cars, and that's what they keep giving us. That's right. Except in Vancouver. I mean, mm. the Canada Line was, I think, it's fantastic. I mean, I've written on it. It's, it's great. Yeah. Um, but the, there's this mentality that you have to have a, uh, a certain population to justify rail transit, and it's just not true. There's no truth to it at all. Is a city the size of Victoria able to support rail? Sure. Okay. Sure. I've got a, on my website, I've got uh, over 200 cities smaller than Victoria that have rail transit. You know, it's, it's all no, in Europe, I guess, or South uh, America? Most in Europe and Asia, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, so. 200 cities with populations smaller than Victoria. That's so right, yeah, have, metropolitan right. population strong, uh, smaller than Victoria <clears throat> with rail, yeah. So what's possible along the line between Langford and downtown Victoria? What can, what can we do to make, or what would work? You could have a rail, uh, a rail transit, serve, a rail, commuter rail line that would, uh, and what you'd have to do now is you'd have to have a bus waiting for the, for the, the train when it came into Vic West. And yeah, then, so let's forget that problem. Let's, yeah. let's say the, bri the Blue Bridge was still there yeah. because it can be put in. Yeah. So let's say the Blue Bridge is still there. We've got a rail line running from Langford to downtown. What can we do? You could, have, you could <clears> start <throat> with diesel, diesel cars, not, not the antiques that they, they were using. They were built in the 1950s. Yeah. Those are... Ridiculous. Okay, so we'd have a good, a good, uh, <clears throat> a good engine and a couple of cars. That's right. Yeah. Oh, it'd be it'd be uh, pretty cheap. Building the rebuilding the bridge, uh, in, and if you're going to rebuild into downtown, it'd be good if it looped over, say, down Wharf Street or something, like closer to the legislature. You know, uh, that'd be nice. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you have any idea of a cost for doing that? Uh, not really, no. My, my main focus has been on, on uh, trams, on, on light rail. Okay, and now are trams light rail or are trams and light tra rail two it's different all, things? Actually, I'm not that big on the, this, the, the whole phrase light rail was kind of an invented term. Okay. And I prefer trams. I mean, that's what they call them in most of the world. In England and Australia and, and Japan and 
Europe, they call them trams, right? And that's so what thing. would what would SkyTrain over in Vancouver be? Is that tram? No, no. SkyTrain is an automated, completely automated system, and it uses a third rail. Okay. What's a tram then? A tram is is uh, what, what we used to call streetcars, uh, but but they're uh, they're, they're uh, but much... when you see them, they're not like the old streetcars. These no, are no, like the Starship right. Enterprise. They, they, uh, the technology in a tram is is really something. It's there's a lot of uh, very high-tech stuff going on in, in a modern tram. So let's say we were running uh, cars, would that be a tram system then from Langford to downtown? It could be, um, or, you could, or you could start with, it would be cheaper to, to run it just as a diesel system to start off, okay. and you could electrify it later. Right, so yeah. trams are electrified. Trams are electric, okay. that's right. They use overhead wires, yeah. yeah. Um, how long would the trip be from Langford to downtown, do you oh, think? Oh, it would be. 25 minutes, I, yeah, very quick. And probably at a few points along the line between Langford and downtown Victoria on the E&N, uh -huh. the train would be met at a station by express buses. That's right, yeah. Running oh, yeah. to, I guess, UVic, uh, yeah. the hospital, That's right, and a yeah. few other. Yeah, the advantage of, of, of LRT is it, it's a lot, like a, a the part of Squimalt that the E&N runs through is pretty low density. There's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot there. There's not a lot of shopping or hospitals or anything. That's the advantage of running LRT up uh, to Uptown and then to Victoria General because there's a lot more uh, people. Yeah, so you're mentioning, you're mentioning the current plan, which is to run a light rail system, they say, from downtown to uptown, right. and then out to Langford. Yeah, yeah. Now, the problem with that is it's being costed at $950 yeah, million. Yeah, which is dollars. ridiculous. It's, that's, that's one of the, if they can build, the, 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 if Lavaland, SNC-Lavaland, the contractor, this is what, what they say, it's going to cost $62 million a kilometer in Victoria, and they're building for $37 million in France. So why, why the huge difference? Why can't they build the same price to build in France? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the same company, and, and nobody talks about that, this huge uh, difference. How, how can we bring the cost down? You know? So, I mean, I personally would have loved to have seen, starting 10 or 20 years ago, a commuter rail system running on the E&N yeah. from Langford to downtown. I mean, great. Yeah. Yeah. would you agree that's a good idea? It's a great idea. Cheap? Cheap. Cheaper than cheaper than than uh, trams, yes. But uh, uh, the number I've seen is sixty to seventy million dollars. Yeah, yeah, to that get, doesn't sound to get everything going: the yeah. rail, the trains, everything. And and, and the advantage is that you can uh, then you can extend to Mill Bay, you can extend to Duncan. Yeah, you know, Nanaimo. I mean, you know, is there public support for uh, rail solutions in Victoria? I think so. I think so. I've never polled. Never done a scientific poll, but you talk to people. Everybody says, "Why does the E and N just sit there?" Yeah, you know. Um, you mentioned uh, the BC Green Party uh -huh. and the CRD Taxpayers Association both support HOV lanes. Yeah, and you were you just wanted to comment on that. Oh, oh, well, well, uh, they're. Funny, <laughs> I mentioned strange bedfellows indeed. The Green Party and the taxpayers. And, yeah, the CRD Taxpayers uh, Association, which has many car dealers, uh, are members of the, uh, and many car related businesses. And they say, why, why don't we consider HOV lanes? Well, most, Victoria would be by far the smallest city that, that ever put in HOV lanes if we ever did. And there was a big study, I brought this in, uh, done in San Francisco by these two, uh, two fellows who were very qualified. One was a, uh, uh, transportation engineer and the other was a statistician and they studied HOV lanes in the center. Maybe you should just tell people who don't know yeah. <clears throat> what is an HOV lane? Oh, an HOV lane is a, is a, a designated lane for uh, buses or uh, vehicles with two or more passengers. Okay. Now do you actually build another lane yeah. or do you take right. one That's lane right. away? From what's you, already you could, there. Usually, it's it, you build another lane. Yes. So it's very expensive. It is expensive, and and these two people <clears> studied <throat> in the Bay Area over a four-year period, and they found they don't work. They don't do what they're supposed to do, and it was a very methodical study. They 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 um, they said it reduces capacity. One problem with HOV lanes is if you're in an HOV lane and the person ahead of you is slow, you're stuck. You know. 
that it sort of takes away the whole advantage of having having two lanes, having a passive lane. If you're in the HOV lane, you know, and that's why people tend to have sometimes avoid HOV lanes because they know it just takes one person driving slowly and then. So you're saying that here in Victoria, the BC Green Party supports yeah, HOV? Yeah, Jane, Jane Stirk said that uh, she thought HOV lanes would be a, should be considered. As uh, a stopgap before rail yeah, or? Yeah, okay. but the fact is they, they don't work. <laughs> yeah, and they don't promote rail because once you've got the HOV lane, I guess people say, well, we got the HOV lane. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the problem. It's, it's, it's always uh, tinkering with the blacktop, you know, whereas we got lots of blacktop. <laughs> yes, know? boy, that's for sure. We got yeah, lots yeah. of blacktop. That's right. <clears throat> so if you were in charge, if you were in charge of transportation planning for uh -huh. the CRD, yeah. You know, you've been looking into this for a long time. What what should we be doing, or what what would you like to do? Well, the first thing we should do is say that we want as much money as Vancouver gets. If you look at per capita, you look at the money that goes into the Lower Mainland. You look at the Canada Line, the Evergreen Line, the the, the Gateway Project, which is like four billion dollars. We're talking the bridges. The yeah, the the the, the Portman Bridge. You look at all those. And then what's Victoria got? Uh, nothing. We've got a couple interchanges, but compared to all these, these huge projects in Vancouver, we get nothing. And, and, and compared to for our population, we should be getting a lot more. Okay, so let's say you're in charge and you yeah. tell Ms. Clark, Premier Clark, we want a lot more. And she says, Louis, you're right. We're gonna give you your fair share. Uh -huh. So now you've got some money. Yeah. So what are we gonna do? I, I would start with a, uh, with a, a tram line, a starter line up Douglas Street, perhaps, you know, it'd be, if, if you had it running to James Bay to the Ogden Point docks, can you imagine what a tourist draw that would be? If you could have trams okay. going to the cruise ships and meeting people, and then they could run right up to, uh, uh, to Uptown. Okay. That'd be relatively cheap to build a short starter line like that. The thing is to get some rail happening, you know, with Well, if we're going to get rail happening, why not, why not the line from the E&N, from Langford to downtown? Well, the, 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 uh, the problem is that the, the ENN doesn't, all the way from Langford to the only real job center on that whole line is Dockyard. Okay, which is important. Which is important. Okay. That is, that's, that's, that's a huge okay. employer. Yeah. But it, it, it doesn't pass the other main No, it places. doesn't go by the hospital, it doesn't go by Uptown. It's not very well situated for you, Vic, or for Camosun. Okay. And going up... Uh, using the Douglas Street corridor, more or less, would... Uh, so you're saying build a cheap system. A, a starter line, yeah. Okay, from, from Ogden Point to, to, to Uptown. Uptown Mall. That's right. Given the realities of the way things are being built in the world today, uh -huh. and we're looking for a, a, an inexpensive fix, right. what would the cost be, do you think? I don't know. I hadn't really cost... I would say $150 million you could do it. Okay. So it's not... Uh, the, a lot of American cities are putting in uh, streetcar lines uh, through their downtowns now. It's, it's really, it's a, you know. I haven't heard this. So you're saying yeah. American cities are putting in streetcar street lines? Streetcar lines, like yeah. relatively short, like, like uh, three to four miles okay. through the downtown. And we could do the same thing. And that, that would, it, but it would, would be built to a standard that uh, uh, light rail could use it, right? Okay. It wouldn't be uh, a light duty system. It, would, it could handle now that's 150 million dollars. Yeah. Now actually, that doesn't seem like a lot of money no. because it means for another 150, we could go all the way out to Langford. Then. Well, no, no, it would be a lot more than that. But well, but but what the, what there hasn't been is any sort of discussion with people between BC Transit and the province how, how to keep costs down. You know, and and to look at all these systems, not just in France but in uh, Norfolk, uh, Where? Norfolk, Virginia. Okay built for much less, much less than what they, than 62 million a kilometer. And Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, North Carolina and Salt Lake City. Lots of, lots of cities are building for a lot less than 62 million a kilometer. Maybe we should talk about what is happening elsewhere in the world, because uh -huh. I mean, there's nothing happening here. No. So no. what is happening elsewhere? Oh, Edmonton and Calgary, lots happening there. Edmonton just got $250 million from the federal government for its, for its, uh, tram system. Uh, the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology is going to be joined uh, to downtown. It's, they're going like crazy. Calgary's going like crazy. And in terms of rail? In terms of rail, yeah. 
And uh, it's fantastic, you know. I mean, those cities, the investment they're making now will, will gradually, I think, transform those cities. And, and uh, it has already in Calgary, you know, very successful. Well, why isn't anything happening here then? I mean, uh, first of all, we never even hear that this is happening in Edmonton and Calgary. That's right, yeah. Because yeah, we, we never hear about it. No. We don't think, well, why aren't we getting it or why aren't we doing it? That's but right. But now yeah. we're hearing about it, so yeah. why isn't it happening here? Boy, it's tough. All this inertia is tough. Yeah. I mean, BC Transit originally wanted to build bus rapid transit down Douglas Street. That's right. <laughs> so, I mean, just let's throw money away on stupid ideas. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because bus rapid transit is, I think... Is it dud? It, 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 Ottawa has a huge system and it, and it hasn't attracted riders at all. You know? Does Ottawa have rail as well? They're, they are finally building rail. Uh, I don't know the opening date. And they, they have a very short line which actually, uh, a little diesel line, which could be a good model for the ENN, you know? Um. Yeah, well, I mean, to me, the, the issue that you've been working on for a very long time is of massive importance. It's really the way to go, and we're not, we're not doing it. Uh -huh. So, I mean, Louis come up with a few ideas. It's up to all of us to start pushing for rail. But before we go, Louis, we've only got two minutes left. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, that was quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just tell us very briefly about the way our old rail systems, which existed throughout North America, were destroyed by the corporations, uh, General Motors, Standard Oil, and yeah. Firestone Tire, among others. Uh -huh. it, it was uh, the biggest corporate scam in history, as far as I know. And it wasn't just General Motors. Here in, Vic here in Victoria, Ford, Ford Motor Company, did this junkie study saying, Buses are better, woo woo. <laughs> and we used to have we used to have rail. We everywhere, used to have, right? and we voted to keep our trams too. We did. We did. But but BC Electric wanted to go with the progressive trends and get rid of them, and that's you know when now did they're this gone. When did this happen? 1948. 1948. Yeah. So we can see that not much has changed between 1948 no. and 2013. No, our heads are in the in the sand. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, if you look at the climate change problem. Oh yeah. I mean, there's nothing we could be doing that's any worse than, and just the downtown traffic problem. I mean, yeah. Cook Street, which everywhere, used to be everywhere, Lamford and, and Saanich, and all the streets uh, are filling up. Yeah. The solution is rail. Let's right. do it. Yeah. Louis Gilbo. All the political parties should be contacting you. You should be made a <laughs> yeah. consultant immediately, yeah. and we should be moving in the right direction. Yeah, right, right. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks, Jack. Thanks for watching this segment <laughs> of Citizens Forum.